So I hope you are all having a great day because honestly, I can't complain until now because we have to make a video on PlayStation fanboys, you know, we couldn't do Xbox fanboys, we couldn't do anyone else, but we got PlayStation fanboys because they're the most loud and vocal group out of every fanboy group you can pretty much find. Like, you know, God forbid you want to do something different, but anyway. We're covering X-Vault because he's a bit silly, and he can't actually tell the difference between actual salt over a console, a platform, or a game, or anything else, and just people stating an opinion that they disagree with something, you know. Absolute big brain power on his part. And it really goes to show that you don't need much skill or quality assurance of your content to actually succeed and make a small group of people enjoy your content. And I think X-Vault could have actually done some pretty good stuff if he actually did a little bit more effort and actually thought about some of the stuff he said in his videos. Because we need more people covering Xbox fanboys. We don't often get that opportunity to cover Xbox fanboys because, first of all, they don't make enough views usually, depending, but the last one I did was actually pretty good when it comes to views. And then second of all, not many Xbox fanboys really say anything as stupid as other groups like Harmon Smith or just PlayStation fanboys in general because there's been a lot of stupid things PlayStation fanboys have done. But regardless, I can appreciate the effort from X-Vault, even if it's complete garbage. But I would appreciate it if he actually did cover actual salt, so he doesn't make us all look bad. So anyway, we're gonna skip a couple seconds into his video as he's just gonna cover a bunch of meaningless stuff that isn't really associated, so... We'll just get past his intro. All right, everybody, welcome back to another x -Vault Gaming video. x -Vault here, and yes, we have that salt coming out from the cracks of the foundation in regards to the PlayStation 5 Pro. At the time of this recording, the PlayStation 5 Pro has arrived. They've been damage controlling and doing everything under the sun to try and stop you from enjoying yourself and having fun and the success of what the PlayStation 5 Pro is. I just want to say this right off the bat. If you want to buy the PS5 Pro, go ahead. I mean, I personally disagree with it as I don't want to support a bad business practice, especially when you're just paying for something that really isn't worth the 700 that they make you pay for it. But here in Australia, if you want it, it's $1,200, and I can tell you right now, in my currency, definitely not worth it, because they're making us pay more for it. And then on top of that, if you want to pay for a disk drive, you don't know how much they're charging you for a disk drive, something that was probably manufactured for like $8 in some Chinese factory? In Australia, it's $160, and a vertical stand is $50, nearly $1,400 for everything to make that as a standard version of a PS4 Pro, or have all the features that a PS4 Pro would have. It's really disappointing that they're charging you for this stuff, and I hope to god the PS6 and the next Xbox is not $700. I mean, you do what you want with your money, but I would not want to support business practices like this. It's it's not going to be in your benefit. But hey, if you see a value out of this, it's entirely up to you, and I hope you get your worth out of it. All right, so like I was saying, what we're going to do is get right to that salt here. We're going to get to everybody's favorite or non-favorite catfish, a.k.a. Andrea Piccinini, a.k.a. Joseph Cruz. They're back at it again, and what better way to damage control than to do a high-profile game such as Wolverine? So as we can see here, here in their delusional land, Wolverine is in development hell, creative director left to join Xbox Perfect Dark Team. So, interesting they talk about development hell, nothing's been stated of the sort, we have no information on Wolverine, not to say that it's not maybe going through some development issues, perhaps, I don't know, I don't know how far they are, nobody's been communicating anything, however, the funny part is, the real reality of the matter is here in regards to this little excerpt here. This week, journalist Jeff Grubb claimed that Perfect Dark is going through a complicated time in its development phase. The source recalled past reports and added the outlook does not look promising. I know this first tweet isn't really necessarily related to the PS5 Pro, also good on him actually covering an actual Xbox fanboy. Appreciate it. Good boy. Good. You get, you get a star. Good boy. But I would like to say, you would hope that they would actually take some criticism for the people that actually played the early version of Wolverine on PC. For those who don't remember, you can actually play Wolverine right now. If you're on PC and you know where to find it. And you would hope that they look at the people that played it early and shared their thoughts on it through Twitter and other platforms, that they would take on the criticism and take away what people actually thought about it and use it in the future of the development of the game. It would, it would actually be kind of beneficial for that Insomniac leak. So it really can go 50-50, maybe they didn't want people to see it, but hey, they get a bunch of criticism that they know they may have not needed. And also, I should just say this, it's pretty standard for developers to go some form of development hell and crunch. It's become a standard within the gaming industry. As much as we may not like it or like to hear it, that's just what it is. Every single day this guy spreads spreads misinformation, and then tries to turn face and act like he's doing the right thing in other regards and the other podcasts he's on, and then turns around and either posts something or says something absolutely ridiculous, 
on one of his own videos. And again, we just spin that narrative. Why? Because we have to make PlayStation look bad. They continually give us promising and quality games, but forget those guys. Screw so for those who are wondering what the context is, because I did skip a little bit ahead as I didn't find any of the stuff necessary, but he's reacting to a clip from Colt Eastwood saying how Wolverine's going through development hell and all this other stuff and certain people are leaving the project, which that is pretty standard. If you've worked on it for a couple of years, you usually leave to go find another job if you're getting burnt out, so I don't really know why that's such a big issue, but I don't know, it could be an issue. It really depends until we see the final product. But mainly, I want to respond to the part here from Xbox saying that PlayStation delivers quality games. Yes, they do deliver much higher quality stuff compared to their competitors like Xbox, because Xbox doesn't really seem to value quality assurance for the most part when it comes to their first party games. I know, really sad to see. But saying games like Final Fantasy 16 and Spider-Man 2 are what you would call quality, because I'm going to continue using those games as examples, because Final Fantasy 16 stutters a lot. Spider-Man 2 literally didn't work on launch. The amount of bugs and broken things in that game is genuinely insane. But like I said, it's pretty much a standard for all major publishers and game developers to release their games buggy and broken because it's what people have come to expect and now accept, sadly. So this isn't necessarily a Sony issue as pretty much everyone has this issue. But you can't sit there and say, X-Vault, that Sony's always going to deliver quality content over and over again, then proceed to see games like this come out. At it. And folks, uh, like I said, if somebody says something stupid, whether you're a PlayStation fan or fanboy or whatever the case is, every once in a while I'm going to post this in here as well if it's too stupid to even my eyes here. So I know a lot of you that are on social media, we recognize who Pio is, right? He's fun. I don't necessarily have anything against Pio or anything like that. I don't talk bad about the guy. I don't comment bad about the guy on social media or troll or anything like that. But let's, let's first take a look. Why are we featuring him? So... Back not too long ago here in September 24th, so not long ago at all, Pio states, decided not to pre-order the PlayStation 5 Pro prices for me. Just the PS5 Pro 1050 USD to his translation of where he's at, right? Disk drive 150 USD, stand 35 USD, over $1,200 for something I don't even will run GTA 6 60 FPS. I just can't do it. Laughing emoji. Now... Here we are. I just want to say this, but for some reason, whenever I go on Twitter, people literally can't form coherent sentences or just say stuff correctly. It must make them stupid. But yes, he's correct. If you, you shouldn't be paying for this, you really shouldn't. 150 USD for a disk drive. Jesus Christ. That is a lot of money. As you can see, it hasn't been too much longer here, and we're, we're not too far away here in <laughs> November, right? Reasons why I am getting a PS5 Pro changed my mind. I can sell my PS5 for 450 euros, 500 USD. People have been telling him that from way back when. He knows this. He's not stupid. Let's continue, though. Seems the PS6 will be between 2028 and 2030, possibly, right? I use PlayStation mostly when gaming, of course. Another duh. PC gaming is not as big of a leap like it was 15 to 20 years ago versus consoles. I just want 60 FPS with good image quality. Maybe some people disagree with me when I say this, but I still believe PC gaming is leaps and bounds ahead of console gaming. There are still so many things you can't access on console that you can only get on the utility of a PC. Modding, game development, or using it for work, doing all these other things that you can't ever do on a console. Yes, a console is a dedicated gaming device, blah blah blah, you get it. But when you're specifically talking about console gaming and PC gaming, PC usually wins the argument every single time. You will never get as many features as you do on PC that a console dreams it could get, you know what I mean? So I don't necessarily agree with him when he talks about that, especially going from console to PC, I literally can't go back. I kinda hate playing on console now. Of course. Again, these are all dumb moments as we continue here. The improvements in games seem to be pretty good versus the base PS5. I know, we, we know this, all right? <laughs> the way devs talk about it has me excited. Okay. So this is why I'm featuring Pyro, Pyro right? Um, is He does this to Engagement Farm, right? We Shit, Sherlock, he's Engagement Farming. Can you not tell that he has Twitter blue? He has a blue chip mark. It's pretty obvious. He makes money from doing that stuff. So, yeah, obvious. Wow. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Wow. We're really learning something new here. 
Damn, we really are. We all knew, anybody that follows Pio, we all knew he was going to get a PS5 Pro. There's no way, in no way, shape, or form, is he not going to get a PS5 Pro. He sits there in engagement farms and pretends and this and that, and that's the unfortunate part, right? Now, he has a ton of followers, and he does this because he does it well. He does the engagement farming well, but I think it's just stupid. So I have to feature this because it's just low bait type of nonsense that gets put out there and again that does make playstation fans look bad it does make them look ridiculous x -Vault, you make the playstation community look like idiots that is why most playstation guys have disowned all the fanboys purely because you say and do all this stupid shit that makes everyone look stupid. So this isn't just a him issue, it's something that you've done in the past by saying constant stupid shit on Twitter all the time. I've seen you do it, I follow you on Twitter. All you do is fanboy on Twitter, instead of actually criticizing the company. And all the things that we call out the Xbox fanboys for, right? So yes, I will post and show this and show how ludicrous this is as well when everybody knows, and just to sit there and, and stir up a storm. And he stuck by it, man. I mean, he stuck by that he wasn't going to do it, and he argued with people and all this stuff. So a waste of his time, a waste of others' time, but maybe not a waste of his time because maybe he's making some sort of... Uh, Income in regards to that on social media. Maybe. I really should have mentioned this earlier in the video, but it is kind of shocking to see X Vault go out of his way and actually criticize PlayStation guys when you would never usually see him do this. He mainly focuses on Xbox, which is genuinely shocking. I I'm going to give him credit for that. Even though the criticism that he may be offering, not that good at all. But regardless, he's still doing it, which is honestly crazy. I would have never expected him to cover PlayStation guys in the video. Maybe he's getting that engagement money, you know, I don't know for sure, but that could be a piece of it. But regardless, he's obviously figured out the game well, but it doesn't make him look any less stupid in regards to him commenting and being engagement bait like that. So I just kind of had to throw that out there. For those that say I don't call it out when I see it, I will call it out if I see something really stupid. And there you go. But let's con- Okay, if that's true, X Vault, why didn't you call out the PlayStation guy that was in the middle of a surgery, stopping everything he was doing at his job, and just bragging about how PlayStation is better in the middle of his work, working on a patient? Or why didn't you call out JTEC literally doing a felony by streaming something he shouldn't? Maybe the first one was a bit before your time as I don't know when you created your YouTube channel. But if you called those guys out, good on you but I don't remember you ever making a fuss about them. Or, you know, you could just call out Japan Hates Xbox, as he's usually saying some of the most stupid and idiotic stuff just to defend PlayStation, but, you know, I guess not. Continue here because we're not done. Now, Solid Rev, we have to feature him, right? I don't feature Solid Rev. Solid Rev's a good guy overall. I actually agree with a lot of what he says. He's just a good dude, right? I like the guy. But I do, again, have to show this in the same stance here, right? Finally had a chance to watch, this is of September 29th, as you see, to watch Digital Foundry's breakdown on the PS5 Pro, and it's only reinforced my decision not to get it. I would rather them upgraded the processor over the GPU and given all these games an FPS boost to 120. These are such subtle changes, $700 for reflections, basically. So people don't understand how nice ray tracing is. They think it's a caveat. They think it's just a filler of whatever and just that's because it is just filler not many people play with a ray tracing i don't play with it on because i don't like it i don't need it killing my performance it's not worth the performance hit most people don't care for it they would rather have 60 to 120 fps but it should also be said, it really depends on the game that you're playing. If it's a single player game, maybe you would prefer having more graphic fidelity or just whatever else, right? But usually, you usually just want to have a standard of 60 FPS and ray tracing on console doesn't allow you to have that for the most part. Just using all these pieces and power to encapsulate that awe and it shouldn't be there. We'd rather have the frames, which they're not wrong, but Regardless, it does make it look nice. If you can get it out of the system, if you can make it all as a one nice package, I think that's great. But of course, to maybe in a month here, like we have PS5 Pro still available for pre-order at Best Buy. Maybe I'll scoop one up, play with it for a few days, and do a review, then shoot it back, lol. Unless I like it, of course. Of course you're going to like it. I mean, <laughs> real quick, real quick. Just one quick example here. Eh, let's make it a couple. Let's show the fact that we have Alan Wake here. Look at the difference between the two. And you have that ray tracing on and how that looks. That looks really, really good. Really, really good. And just keep in mind, this is also compression. 
I thought this was going to be a comparison between the PS5 and the PS5 Pro, but apparently he picks the Series X and the PS5 Pro. I don't know if that's really the right comparison. I would pick right then and there. I would say it's a bit of a wrong comparison, but hey, I mean, apparently the Series X was the most powerful console, so who knows? Maybe that is a good example. In regards to online sharing here. so. There's that. And then on top of that, you're going to have those frames per second boost, right? Those FPSs, right? FPS assists, whatever they are, right? You're going to have that on there. Take a look at the screen, of course, for Call of Duty Black Ops 6. And that's courtesy, of course, of Digital Foundry, I believe. And you, you just have a lot of pros versus the cons. No one's going to sit there. Not everybody's loving playing PC. It's not for everybody. It's not as convenient. You're not... I mean, there's a lot to it. We're not going to... Okay, bit of a side tangent, but it's still really related to this because it's kind of just annoys me about how a lot of people say, like, PC gaming is hard to get into. It's hard to maintain and look after your PC and whatever else people say to give excuses towards the PC platform because apparently it's hard to put a CPU in a CPU slot and a GPU in the GPU slot. I mean, yeah, the only hard part of the putting the PC together is, like, the cables from the motherboard but that's pretty much it and then you know they always talk about how like drivers are really hard to put together and install it's like you know you just need to go to like the websites right and they tell you all the stuff you can easily set it to automatically update or just set things to send you notifications when you need to update like i don't get how people say pc gaming is really inconvenient it isn't i think most of these guys that have never played on pc are just genuinely stupid i'm gonna break that down in this video again however actually let's take a quick look at this video here <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> so as you see, I mean, it just, just playing some fun there and a little bit of truth behind it, right? I mean, what can I say? But again, I don't... You're very lucky, X-Vault, that I can't identify what GPU that is. But from what my brain is telling me, it's probably a 10 or a 20 series GPU. And I can assure you, depending on which one that is, it'll probably outpace the PS5 Pro and the PS5. So be very careful with your words, buster. I don't have anything against Solid Rev. I just want to point out the fact that, hey, we have these examples here where people's like, nah, I don't want it. I'm not buying on the hype. It's not a big deal. It's not a good value. It is. It's a great value especially if you're a console gamer, if you have consoles, or you enjoy console gaming on top of your PC owning. I'm sorry, champ, but it's not worth the price. They bottlenecked it even more by adding a better part of the GPU instead of just making the processor better, and that would have fixed pretty much a majority of the issues that the console had and shortened the bottleneck to being very small, and they would have actually got better performance, but no. Let's increase the GPU, because I don't know, we have no idea what we're doing, we gotta make it charge $700 for it. Also good to know, X-Vault, that you're just a blind consumer and won't actually listen to the criticism that people may have. But then again, I never expected much of you anyway. So that's pretty much it for this video. The last five minutes of X-Vault's video just kind of talks about salt that is related to other subjects than the PS5 Pro. Mainly how he was talking about how LEGO Horizons may come to Xbox from an Xbox Insider, but for some reason these Xbox Insiders couldn't predict that Death Stranding was coming to Xbox. Anyway, this is pretty much the end of the video. Leave a like, subscribe, I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great day.